There are 89 legendary lords in Warhammer 3, each with their own starting location, armies and situations. But who has the easiest start to their campaign in the game? Well today we're going to count down the top 10 easiest campaigns in Total War Warhammer 3. And to make things interesting, let's stick to only one per faction for some variety. And lastly, stick around till the end to find out how you can get one month of premium Skillshare totally free. Coming in 10th place we have Ikit Claw. He's sneaking his way onto this list purely by his power level and nothing else, because everything about him really isn't all that easy. Skaven in general aren't the best beginner friendly faction, since they just have so many mechanics to worry about that the newer players are going to get overwhelmed in moments. That being said, if you're getting a little experience under your belt and want to try some evil factions, you can't get much stronger than Ikit. I've gushed to buy him a thousand times, but you have the ambush BS that all Skaven have, alongside the workshop which is straight busted, even while being used in the most basic of ways. His starting location is also probably the best of the Skaven, since he has that massive Skaven Blight settlement right out the gate, with relatively weak factions surrounding him, making for early easy game expansion, without worrying about too much pushback. The only real threat you have to immediately deal with is the Beastmen, and all that ends up being is a waiting game for them to leave the Herdstone undefended. Then you just ambush their army and shoot them to ribbons and have free reign over the Tilaean coastline. After this, the Will's Your Oyster with Bretonians to the north, the Dwarfs to the east, and the High Elves far off in the west. And again, Skaven are not the easiest, but with just how powerful Ikit can be and how much he can get going right out the gate, he's easily one of your best options when wanting to play as a rat. Coming in ninth, we have Wurzag, sticking with a faction that you could consider evil. On first look, Greenskins seem like they have really rough starts, since they all start a war with basically everyone, but once you understand their mechanics, you'll realise how you can use that to your advantage and none do this better than the Great Green Prophet. He starts more or less in the middle of the Badlands, which admittedly, which admittedly, aren't as hospitable as they once was, but nevertheless, he can still make the best of this situation. The initial war combined with the Tribal Confederation mechanic means he can get a massive amount of land under his control in record speed, as long as he focuses on hunting down other Greenskin faction leaders. In the immediate vicinity, he has four or five other greenskin tribes he can take out to net himself a very significant portion of the map, as well as all the resources that come with it, not to mention any armies these factions have left. Yes, he will have to deal with the ogres, beastmen, corn, maybe some rats and dwarves, but it's still a huge amount of territory basically handed over to him on a silver platter. Add on the fact he primarily uses Savage Orcs, no one will have real magical damage early on, and he can make the most of this early boom to get a massive head start in his campaign. Throw in a wire or two, and he should have a relatively leisurely time conquering the world. Coming in 8th we have Isabella slash Vlad. Now quite like who I want to dominate me, the choice between these two for who has the better start is damn hard, but I think Isabella has the edge on both accounts. Her effects just allow her to capitalise on these starting conditions far easier than Vlad. She starts with Vlad as a legendary hero, and he is exactly the same as when he's a lord, just with a slightly trimmed down skill tree, so you basically have two legendary lords in the same army. Add on Isabella's effects which enhance embedded vampire heroes and the vampire hero that you start with, and with these three you'll have an easy time against anything the early game can throw at you. The starting war against Templehof has always been a breeze, so now it's even easier to get the whole two provinces in no time flat. Beyond that, it is pretty much the Empire show, but that's not necessarily a bad thing, as your early game hero-led army should be able to power through anything they can throw you before they get some major ranged or artillery on the go. You won't really come across a challenge until they get to Kal, Kislev, or another major faction of some kind. Honestly, the main power is the power couple, so as long as you keep them together, you should have an easy time of it. Closing out the evil factions, we have one of the most busted legendary lords to be added to the game in recent memory, and he's free content. Of course, we're talking about Rikarth, and if you're not familiar how he works, as he battles and travels the world, he fills up his beast pens with all kinds of monsters, which he can then recruit into his army regardless of recruitment buildings and level. These monsters can be things such as feral cold ones, bears, giant spiders, oh yeah, and carnosaurs, hydras, and caribbed for her pleasures. Now, you don't get them for free, but once you get some, it really is a snowball that gets on a pretty ridiculous roll. He starts his campaign in Lustre, which isn't quite as bad as it once was, so that places him nicely in the middle. The starting war with lizards will give him a chance to capture some feral carnosaurs and stegodons when attacking their settlements. So yeah, getting one of those turn one seems uh, pretty balanced to me. Once you get into the rhythm of battling, capturing beasts and rolling them into your army and armies to battle again, you really can't go wrong. You don't really need to actually recruit any units for his entire campaign, unless you're desperate for an audience to applaud as the monsters tear everything you come across limb from limb. Coming in sixth place we have Grom Brindle, moving into the good factions now since, let's be honest, they have an easier time of it 99% of the time. I had to include dwarfs on this list and when it comes to these short little dudes, none are better right out the gate than Grom Brindle. Now yes, his starting location is a little bit more hospitable than it once was when he was shacked up with Thorgrim, and on raw starting locale, the High King still holds the crown. But Grumbrindle has so much more going for him that makes his start far easier. For starters, the Lord himself. 
Grom is an outstanding fighter and early on can carry your battles single-handedly. So much damage and toughness that nothing early will be able to come close to touching him. Secondly, his power of the Ancestor Gods, given his entire faction bonuses, every 25 turns can give a huge boost to where he needs it early on, and there isn't really a bad choice. Replenishment is great to keep him moving, but if you want more damage from him, his units, or maybe some building and recruitment cost reductions, then it's all great too. Now, the location itself, surrounded by rats, dark elves, and more, is pretty hostile, but it actually lets him use his grudge against elves, so you're going to clap their pasty cheeks like nobody's business. Combine all of this with the ease that is the dwarf's gameplay by default, they have one of the easiest armies to use well in the game, with their turtling playstyle and are incredibly tough to take out, especially in the early game before anyone gets any armor piercing. They're a great noob faction in every aspect, so you can't go wrong giving them a try for one of your first campaigns. Coming in fifth place, we have Orion. Honestly, I went back and forth with myself on if the Wood Elves should even make it, and which Lord, if any, to put on the list, before I finally settled on Orion. I think the caveat I should put before this entry is that they have a really unique playstyle, so if you're brand new to the game, I'd probably leave them for later, as nothing you learn here will really be relevant in other factions. But if you're looking for a change of pace, then they are a super strong faction and honestly, might have one of the biggest snowballs I've ever seen. Spark notes version of their game plan. Take control of magical forests all over the map and clear areas around them of hostiles to heal them up and get massive bonuses. You can get to each of these forests using deep roots which allow you to teleport between all the forests on the map regardless of ownership. The reason Orion is the easiest campaign is pretty much just down to the wild hunt mechanic which is honestly pretty boring since it's just buffs but they are so strong it's insane. The stat buffs are nice and doubling off his bonuses is pretty cool and all but 10 turns off the deep roots cooldown and all that range after raising means you can zip around the map clearing the forest at record speed and raking in tons of bonuses for your trouble. Not only are the bonuses for cleansing forests super strong, but any forests you aren't residing in permanently, you can make into income factories. And I'm not joking when I say some of my richest campaigns are as the Wood Elves. Again, it's more or less a different game to normal campaigns, but nonetheless, they are incredibly strong and easy once you know what to actually do. Coming in fourth, we have the Fey Enchantress. Fey has one of those campaigns that's so easy to the point it's a little bit boring, and it really just comes down to one thing. The location is just so safe. You have Grom and his mountain hold and a handful of weaker foes within reasonable distance, but aside from that, she might as well spawn in the Garden of Eden. Once you take out the Greenskins, you have no immediate threat, so kind of run out of things to do since everyone around you you'd rather have as a friend. Sure, you have Icky and the Beastmen to the south, some vampires kind of close and pirates out to sea, but in your little patch of paradise, there's not really much to bother you. Add on her faction's replenishment, keeping your army in tip-top shape at all times, and you're going to struggle to find something to do to make use of said replenishment. It's one of those campaigns where you need to look for something to do, so if you're feeling a little bit stressed out and want to enjoy some ambient Bretonian coastline, then I highly recommend a vacation to Carcassonne. Yeah, it's a short one, but there really is nothing to say other than it's so damn easy to the point of being a little bit boring. Going to third place, we have Meow Ying. Now, is Meow as easy as fate? I would argue no, but she is more fun while still being super easy, so I'm going to put her above, but since the hardest part of playing Faye is staying interested in the game. So Meow obviously starts at the top of Cathay within the walls, and they're all under Cathayan control, so Chaos will be kept at bay, at least for a little while. The only real threat she needs to worry about, outside of the pitifully weak early war against the Cathayan rebels, are Snitch, Locate, and then a bunch of rebels and vampires further down south. The major benefit she has is starting in the corner of Cathay, so she only needs to worry about expanding and defending in one direction, which makes for a much easier time, especially when starting out. Now yes, she should aim to take control of the Great Bastions as soon as possible to build them up herself and keep Chaos out for good, but she can work in a confederation or just attack them head on once the coast is clear of rats and other threats. This is all I can trade with a massive amount of other factions to rake in the cash from all the resources in the land and great connections to other factions. Add on the caravans for free money, the compass for free buffs, and it's hard to have a rough time playing as Mao Ying. Coming in second place, we have Tyrion. Tyrion has forever been my go-to recommendation for people starting their first campaign, as you really cannot go wrong picking him, as he starts in a great location surrounded by plenty of potential allies on an island that will make a great home once all the invaders have been cleared out. You have Noctilus in the south for the occasional bit of pirate enemy variety, but mostly you have a pretty straightforward campaign where you just work your way around the donuts, uniting the high elves and taking out anything else that gets in your way. It's hard to pinpoint what makes him such an easy campaign other than the fact that he just plays super easy. The enemies you're up against aren't anything too difficult with the exception of the carry at the top, but by the time you get there you should have a pretty decent force so it won't be too much trouble. Tyrion is a great lord for the early game too with decent battling ability that scales well into the mid game before dropping off later to let the rest of his army do all the work. Speaking of which, the high elf army is a noob dream with good units in basically every category allowing you to try out a variety of playstyles to find the one that works best for you. You've got front lines, ranged, carve, even a couple of monsters here and there to dip your toes into the more bizarre side of the series. His mechanics are pretty simple, but that's what you want in your first game, so I'm not complaining. Influence can pile up over time to get you powerful lords and heroes without ever having to worry about using it on anything else, because let's be honest, it's a little bit pointless. If you are brand new to the series, whether that's Warhammer or Total War in general, Tyrion is a great place to start. It's the first campaign I ever finished on Warhammer 2's Vortex, and look at me now, getting cyberbullied online for making lists everyone disagrees with. And coming in first place, we have Gorok. I really don't think I need to say more than Lord Crow. 
broke to convince anyone why this is the easiest campaign in Warhammer 3, but since I need to stretch out Vitz Rad revenue, I'll say a little bit more. If you're not aware who Lord Croak is, he is a legendary hero that all lizards can unlock via a quest, with the exception of Gorok. That quest normally gets completed around the mid-game and rewards you a super powerful caster that will be a valuable addition to any army, and give you a huge power and fun spike. Well Gorok said screw that, I'm gonna have this guy right out the gate, be free, and a top tier lord even without him. He's quite literally a noob stream. First of all, amazing battler, super tough and dealing great damage, whilst having Croak at his back to drop tactical nukes hard enough to make Ikit a little hot under the blue metal collar. He makes his own army fatter and more resilient to missiles, meaning nothing can really stop their momentum early on, he has massive buffs on defending settlements, and his unique right improves literally the bread and butter of the faction. Saurus units. It's basically cheating playing this guy and now Lustre isn't quite as gross as it once was. He's an extremely powerful pick for any player wanting to get into the monstrous side of Warhammer. Is he someone I'd recommend for your first campaign as much as Tyrion? Probably not. It doesn't teach you as much as that campaign will. But if you want a power trip like no other and want to see just how many kills you can get using magic and a lord alone, look no further than the game's second best power couple. If you're still looking for something easier to start then why not check out today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare makes it easier than ever to pick up new skills, and they're not just limited to creative things like film and photography. They've got all kinds of career-focused classes from freelance to e-commerce, so whatever goal you have in mind, they have you covered. This month I've been trying to learn some Italian since the lady that lives in my house, aka my girlfriend, is Italian and none of her family speaks English, so talking to them is kind of a bit challenging. The 3 minute Italian for beginners by Kieran Ball has been perfect for this. It splits lessons into 3 minute chunks so I can complete a lesson in no time at all and carry on with my day while slowly building up my knowledge. And you might be wondering how my Italian's coming along, well I'm no professional, but uh, I think it's absolutamente fantastico. But if that's not for you there are literally thousands of other classes for a huge range of topics so you will absolutely be able to find something right for yourself. If you want to give it a try and see what class is for you, then check out the link in the description where the first 1,000 people to click will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Lastly, a huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this channel and this video. And now, onto the outro. And that's my list. If you disagree, then leave your changes in the comments below. Like, subscribe, and if you want to know what the best augment spells in the game are, then check out this video here to see the top 10.